Hello everyone and welcome back to another update. We're going to check on the water levels heading into winter and we have a couple quick stories around Lake Mead today, so let's jump right in. It's been cooling off nicely around the lower basin lately, making it near perfect weather for hiking the desert, cruising Lake Shore Drive, or heading out on the water. Here in the Mojave, we sometimes jokingly refer to this as being second spring, as much of the desert vegetation will rebloom and temperatures become perfect for outdoor activities again. You may notice from our lack of recent content here at Mojo Adventures that we have also been away from the keyboard, enjoying this opportunity to explore the desert and recharge our batteries. One of our favorite quick getaways for that is the historic railroad trail that overlooks Lake Mead here. With the lake nice and calm today for once, this provides a great illustration of what the lake has been doing over the past few weeks since the last report, which is not much of anything. Lake Mead is currently sitting at 1,064 feet above sea level, holding relatively steady at 34% full now for a few months. It can be pointed out that we have well exceeded the dire levels from last year in 2022 and have nearly crossed the seasonal level from back in 2021. The high level for 2023 at Lake Mead remains near its current level at 1,066 feet so far this year. Last update, we talked about how all the water helping to fill and maintain Lake Mead had been coming from Lake Powell upstream. As we look at Lake Powell's level today, we see it sitting at 3,572 feet above sea level, or 37% full, holding steady Lake Mead, and losing less than a foot of elevation since last report. On Lake Powell's graph, you can see it bleeding off water in the second half of the year to maintain Lake Mead and the demand downstream. But over the last few weeks as Mead has stabilized, it looks like Powell has stabilized along with it. It seems the USBR has been doing a good job of priming the Colorado River system and getting things evened out, ready for the next spring melt. All this amongst talks of a possible Super El Nino on the horizon this coming winter, according to a new climate model developed at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. Let's pull up the latest weekly water supply report from the USBR. If we once again compare Lake Mead's total content with Lake Powell's total content, you can see the total volume of water in both reservoirs is still about even, whereas around a year ago, Lake Mead was purposely being starved to prop up water levels at Lake Powell. Down at the bottom of the weekly, we can see the total system content in the lower basin as of this report is 43%. Compare that to this time last year, where the total lower basin content was at an alarming 33%. One more interesting figure to point out is the unregulated inflow into Lake Powell. So that would be rain, flooding, snow, etc. above Lake Powell that flowed into the reservoir and became available for use. We can see for the 2023 water year, which just ended in October, that inflows were 140% above normal, all contributing to our perfect storm of reservoir recovery we've seen in 2023. Looking at some of the stories around Lake Mead today, we have a report from the National Park Service that Lake Mead will go cashless in 2024. Beginning January 1st, the recreation area will transition to a cashless fee collection system, accepting only electronic card payments for entrance, lake use, and campground fees. Entrance stations will continue to sell passes, but will no longer accept cash for payment. Advanced campground reservations, as well as first-come, first-served sites, will be available only through recreation.gov. Concession operations at marinas, hotels, and stores within the park will still accept cash or electronic card payments. This is important to keep in mind for you fellow spur-of-the-moment campers. Going cashless has become a controversial topic no matter where it is implemented. The National Park Service fees are no different, already stirring up remarks from the community. Some feel it could deter disenfranchised people from visiting the parks. Others think that it has a larger or more nefarious purpose, such as a central bank digital currency. The transition from accepting cash at Lake Mead isn't unique, however, as we can see in this article from USA Today. As of 2023, dozens of park sites have already gone cashless, including Death Valley National Park, Rocky Mountain National Park, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and Mount Rainier. It's worth noting that only about a quarter of the 424 sites within the National Park System charge entrance fees, and park managers decide whether their sites go cashless or not. In recent years, the U.S. Treasury created policies to reduce the amount of cash and checks handled across the federal government and many banks stopped partnering with the Treasury in that process. 
This was one of the major reasons for the National Park Service to begin going cashless. Another reason cited was the cost of processing and transporting cash to and from banks using armored car services, especially those in remote locations like Death Valley, where costs for the Park Service reach $40,000 per year. I'll leave a link to those articles below if you want to learn more about this story and the reasoning behind it. Moving on to one more quick story today, we had a lot of viewers comment on the water quality stories around Lake Mead and Las Vegas we presented over the last several updates. Since then, we've had some more water quality issues pop up in the last few weeks centered around one of the most popular and well-traveled areas of the park, the hot springs. For those that don't know, there are several marked and unmarked hot springs located along the Colorado River beneath Hoover Dam. A couple of these hot springs can be accessed by hiking in from above or by watercraft from the river below, making them extremely popular with tourists and outfitters. Sadly, it seems overcrowding and poor stewardship have taken their toll on these beautiful areas, as this story from News 3 reports. Arizona hot springs at Lake Mead closed due to high fecal bacteria levels. The closure will affect the Arizona Hot Springs Trail, Arizona Hot Springs, and the White Rock Canyon parking lot on Highway 93. You can see us hike into these popular hot springs from our White Rock Canyon video here on YouTube. Crews are currently taking corrective action to improve water quality over the next several days, including removing sandbags to flush the pools out. The areas will reopen once water quality meets federal and state safety standards. Lake Mead officials also reminded the public to always follow the leave no trace principles, which include packing out trash and human waste. It's disheartening now to learn that there has been both a Las Vegas City sewage leak above the dam, which contaminated the wash feeding Lake Mead, and now irresponsible guests leaving waste to contaminate the springs in Colorado River below the dam. Will our waterways ever get a break? Unfortunately, human waste isn't the only biohazard lurking around the hot springs and recreation area. Many viewers were surprised to learn that a brain-aiding amoeba called Negleria fowleri, which often inhabits bodies of warm, fresh water, was found around the park. Signage is even placed by the Park Service warning guests of the possible consequences of accidentally inhaling the water. The amoeba affects people by entering the body through the nose and traveling to the brain, where it destroys the brain tissue and causes a devastating infection called primary amoebic meningoencephalitis, or PAM. It cannot infect people if swallowed and is not spread from person to person. The infection is extremely rare, but almost always fatal. Many of you were very interested in a story from last summer involving a juvenile who contracted Negleria fowleria kingman wash, a cove on the Arizona side of the lake. What makes this case so sad and tragic is that the boy was simply swimming in the lake, not at a hot spring, but the warm and stagnant water sitting in the heat of summer created just the right conditions for the amoeba to thrive in the lake itself. This was the first confirmed fatality caused by Negleria fowleri from possible exposure at Lake Mead National Recreation Area. The deadly amoeba may be present in any freshwater body in the United States, regardless of the state, especially during the warmer months of July, August, and September. But since it's a heat-loving organism, it grows best at high temperatures up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, or 46 degrees Celsius, and can survive for short periods of time at even higher temperatures. Infections usually happen when temperatures are hot, which results in higher water temperatures and lower water levels. Precisely what happened at Kingman Wash the last few years as we pictured on this channel. Thankfully, Negleria fowleri infections are relatively rare in the United States with between 0 and 5 cases diagnosed annually from 2013 to 2022. Of course, the loss of this boy who is just enjoying a day at the lake is a devastating tragedy, no matter how low the stats are. And it might not be as rare as you think here in Nevada. In fact, not far from Lake Mead, up near Alamo, Nevada, a 2-year-old boy passed away just this summer after contracting the amoeba at a local hot spring there. So if you plan on visiting the lake or any hot springs, please keep in mind this information, know what's out there, and take precautions to protect yourself and others. We know you have many places to get your news and entertainment these days, and we'd like to thank you for spending some of that time here. If you'd like to support our work directly, please stop by Mojo Earthworks on Etsy and pick up an adventure tea or some artwork to help us continue. And like always, stay hydrated, stay happy out there, and we'll see you on the next one.